What time is it? It's time for Views on the News. Uh, was, was the Pope appealing for peace or was he praying for peace? Um, and, and the same applies to the Caribbean drag. Yeah, that's a good question. Place. So what do, you, what do you have to say about that, guys? And as usual, we have an international panel of the wise and witty. From Northern England, it's Guy Otten. Welcome, Guy. Hello. Cheers. From South Africa, it's Tercia Duplessis. Welcome, Tercia. Thank you, John. Good evening, everybody. And from New York, it's David Orenstein. Welcome, Hello. David. Good to see everybody. What a lovely collection of intelligent people. Yeah. So, item number one, French schools. It's nice, isn't it, to start with a country that doesn't normally feature in the global atheist news, but France is, is moving up into the same sort of ballpark as Israel, Afghanistan, Iran, uh, Pakistan. <laughs> you know, it's moving up because they're having violence in their French schools. And two young teenagers have been attacked this week, one of them fatally. Uh, that was a 15-year-old boy named Sham Sedin, who died in hospital. That came, the news of that death came a day after he was beaten by a group of youths wearing balaclavas. Then on Tuesday in the southern city of Montpellier, a 14-year-old girl named Samara was placed in an artificial coma after she was beaten by a group shortly after leaving school. In that case, three adolescents, a girl and two boys of roughly the same age as her, have been arrested and admitted taking part in the attack. The girl's mother told French media that Samara had been bullied by another girl at the school because she refused to follow Islamic dress codes. Mum said, Samara puts on a bit of makeup and this other girl wears the headscarf. So she keeps calling her an unbeliever. Mm. She said, my daughter dresses like a European, but every day there's been insults. It was physically and psychologically unbearable. Now, of course, in France, it's illegal to wear religious dress at school. And last week, you may remember, a head teacher in Paris resigned because he'd received death threats for telling a girl to remove her head covering, mm -hmm. quite legally telling a girl to remove her head covering. And then two years ago, uh, two teachers were murdered, one of them decapitated in Paris by Islamist radicals. What do you think of that, guys? So, so first thing I'd like to ask is this this um teenager who died was I'm, I'm presuming the girl it, that she um identifies as muslim what her parents do and the boy muslim jewish christian is it is it known is it uh not to me it isn't no his name is shem sedin which sounds like uh, uh, ethnically it's Syrian uh, it, it sounds to me sort of Middle East and Shams means son yes in, in yeah. Arabic mm. Shams said in the likelihood is that he's uh, a Muslim but we don't we don't have any it, yeah we don't know he might be a Christian I suppose mm. of that. Mm. well it's I mean it's tough we we just in the United States um, had a um, an anniversary, if you will, of the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, on uh, he died, uh, was uh, murdered uh, at the Lorraine Hotel in uh, April fourth, nineteen sixty-eight. And of, of course, this is a man who said, and rightfully so, that we shouldn't be judging people by really anything but the content of their character. Yes. Uh, and and here you go, whether it's. Christians beating Muslims or Muslims beating other Muslims for not being Muslim enough yeah. um, 
or or other people being beaten for the sake of yeah. um, their faith or their non-faith, whether yeah. they want to be secular. Um, it's clear that in many communities, and today it's France we're talking about, but we can see this happening in America, in yeah. London, uh, really all over the world, that when religion becomes the topic of violence, um, uh, it, it it's clear that that is the root of what's causing the suffering. Yes, yes, um, and and for those who practice their religion peaceably and want to live in a secular, democratic, diverse society, those are not our enemy. It's the people, regardless of their religion they're born into, if they take if they if they decide to be religiously violent, we must hold them to account. Mm. I mean, um, I, it seems to me we don't know for sure that the motivation was religious here. It might have been something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, in the case of the girl, we do, because there was this argument over mm. her makeup and not wearing a headscarf. The other girl who was uh, accusing her of being a non-believer was wearing a headscarf. So it mm -hmm. seems very likely that it's a it's a disagreement about not being Muslim enough. Right. As they, what, what, very well put what, it. What worries me is uh, this. Uh, it, it reminds me. I think was it Christopher Hitchens who said um, he he had this challenge that he put out there that said, "Name one good thing right. that an atheist cannot do." Uh, that that people of faith can but mm -hmm. but the, then there's also that quote that it's it seems it's only religion that enables good people to do bad things mm -hmm. yeah. and what worries me about these attacks um amongst young children and teenagers is that we still have this idea in society that it's not acceptable to challenge uh, or to question religious beliefs mm -hmm. in, in fact i think that idea is becoming more prevalent if i listen to my own mm -hmm. children um, who mm -hmm. are in their late teens and early 20s so there's this idea that um your truth is your truth and my truth is my truth and that means that people uh, i've heard even teenagers who are professed non-believers say yes but you can't um you you can't say something that will offend another believer's beliefs mm -hmm. this is now not related to any particular religion and what worries me about this phenomenon is that if it, it seems to me that we might be moving into a time where if teenagers attack another teen teenager because she's not wearing the hijab or she's wearing makeup that they can sort of use it as a get out of jail pass because my religion says and, mm. and and we shouldn't criticize it just becomes a little bit fuzzy and sticky and i'm worried that we're moving into the sort of relativistic uh scenario because there's the sensibility the sensitivity that you're not supposed to challenge religious beliefs because religion is sort of it's, untouchable it, um, it, I, that, I don't i don't agree with any of that don't touch me thing we can't allow ourselves to be ruled by the the reported ideas of the representatives of a non-evidential deity. It's ridiculous. Right. I agree with you 100%. Right. I absolutely agree. But the there are more and more people who still have hold this idea, even some non-religious people, who hold this idea that yes, we have to be sensitive to the sensibilities of relig religious people. No, we don't. No, we don't. We have to criticize I, everything. Right. Nothing's sacrosanct. There's Nothing. the, there's an old adage in, and, and maybe you have it uh, in South Africa, which basically says that your rights end at the tip of my nose. Mm. Um, your, and, right, your right to swing your fist ends at the tip of my nose. Exactly. Exactly. So you can believe what you want. You can do what sure. you wish. Uh, as long as it doesn't physically harm me, be my guest. But once you cross that bridge, you know, now you're talking about assault. Yeah. You know, you're talking about violence, um, ethnic, I, you know, ethnic or religious to, violence. I want to put it out there that 
we need to establish where that line is. And mm -hmm. in my opinion, the line is that I can believe what I want to believe, but I have no right mm. to enforce whatever I believe or don't believe on anybody else. Mm -hmm. And I do not have the right to be offended, nor does any person of faith have the right to not be offended. If, if I say something that offends a, a, a religious person, that is uh, their problem and they have to deal with that. That is, I, I should not be put into a position in the public arena I'm talking about now, where I have to police my speech and no. my actions to not offend the sensibilities of and religious somebody people. Else. Now, yeah, yeah. yeah, so in my view, offence is much more taken than it is given. Mm. There's yeah. a spectrum there. I mean, I can say something that I mean to be offensive to you to see how you react, but I, I don't have to do that and I can bite my tongue if I want to. But what we have at the moment is the, the needle has moved right up very close to me so that almost anything I say can be taken by him as being offensive. It's ridiculous. Yes, and I, I, I also want to make the distinction that what I'm talking about, and I think what we are in agreement with, is that we are talking about what happens in the public arena. So mm. if I have a Muslim friend or a Hindu or a Christian friend and I go to visit them in their house, then mm. I will be respectful uh, towards their beliefs because I'm a guest in their house and the, mm. the personal relationship takes precedence. So mm. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about specifically what happens in the public arena. Mm. And I think that's, that's the conversation that needs to be had. Mm. Absolutely. What's worrying, though, is that it's... The, 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 the spreading of doctrines in away from their country of origin, away from, you know, religions are a bit like bacterial cultures. They have a, an origin and they spread out and they're spreading into our cities. They've brought them here. And it, as an example, we get lots of uh, protest marches in London, mostly in support of the Palestinian, occasionally in support of the the Jewish position, but take a look at this. This is some guy who's fully supporting Hamas. It's unbelievable. It's a terrorist organization. It's recognized in this country as a terrorist organization and in other countries too. And this guy is here. Look what he's saying. Well, I, I think there is a perspective on this because, um, <clears throat> it, you know, because Palestine has, in fact, been illegally occupied for 75 years. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the, the Maki in France were resisting German occupation. And we didn't think of them as terrorists, even though some of their techniques may have been, been such as we would now see as terrorism. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think it's it's a it's a respectable view to support Hamas as a resistance movement. Um, that's not to say that everything they do is fine. Of course it isn't. But that is that. Oh. I think that's a I think that's a reasonable and respectable view, John. To be honest, well, I take a different view from you here, Guy, yeah. because I think that both sides in this dispute are thoroughly disrespectable. Well. <laughs> The, the sides maybe they're both using violence in the most horrendous way but i'm i'm talking about the position of supporting uh a a resistance movement against oppression seems to me to be a reasonable stance to take even though you know i, I would like to be a little bit more objective and impartial and neutral in the matter but yeah yeah there you go i i, I agree with, with with guy in I wanted to say that I, I tend to lean more to agreement with Guy, coming from a country where the African National Congress was once a terrorist organization, it was banned, and mm. we all know, so, so I have a more nuanced view, and I think 
while I abhor the violence that both sides are perpetuating, and I think the root cause of it is uh, fundamentalist beliefs, and I think that should be addressed, that it boils down to that any person who supports Hamas should have the right to express his views and he should have the right to support whichever organization he wants to um, and and i don't think that he, any person can be criticized for supporting what even his country and his government regards as a terrorist organization uh, so i find it I, offensive <laughs> <laughs> and you have the right to <laughs> <laughs> You've taken offence, <laughs> yes, <laughs> where none was mended. I mean, it, it is a pro it is a problem. It is a problem. I mean, the same went for the Irish, the IRA, the IRA in the government eyes. Uh, well, the provisionals were yeah. uh, terrorists. In their own eyes, they were freedom fighters. Yeah, um, I think it's difficult. It's more difficult in Northern Ireland, especially after the democratic reforms. Uh, but I do think the 1922 separation of Ireland was a mistake. Oh, definitely, yeah. The, the, we talked about this a, a bit last week, didn't we? As, oh, a, right, as, a, as a final comment on, on this topic, maybe I can just say that whenever I'm confronted with situations like these, the, the IRA, uh, the <laughs> ANC, Hamas, I, I sometimes wish that I could be more fundamentalist in some of my views because it would be so much easier in complex situations. I was thinking about this the other night, uh, watching what's happening, and I, it it it's it must be so much easier psychologically to not have this cognitive dissonance where you, you mm. abhor what happened on the seventh of October, but you it, it's a it's a very um, uh, I, I as an individual experience a, a severe cognitive dissonance because. I, I can see both sides and, and that's to me it's a very uncomfortable situation psychologically to be in and, and I think as, as as somebody who who experiences that I can identify with the people who find it much easier to just say this is my stance and this is because in many well, ways it is yeah. easier it I don't think it's right but I can to, understand I, I've sometimes yeah. wished that I could be like that and, and well, that I didn't have in these complex situations to feel this sort of mm -hmm. it, there must be a better way than either or and, and choosing sides uh, right yeah. I mean my feeling is um, uh, frankly uh, in, in this debate and in what's happening uh, between the quote unquote peace negotiators is that both Israel and Hamas uh, for their own political uh, needs uh, are really not supporting peace. Um, and, and that to me, regardless of who you might support or who you feel caused this or anything like that, babies are dying. People are not eating. There's famine, yeah. no war. There's just all these things are happening. People in, um, in Israel are, um, suffering as well. Um, uh, there are still hostages. Uh, mm. The Palestinian side, innocent civilians, um, um, are, are are threatened with daily violence. And, and and to me, whether you are a supporter of whichever governmental agency has control over the politics of it, they're not living up to what is required to be humane. No, uh, and, and that to me is the thing that yeah. it, it is the most difficult and heart wrenching as a humanist to look at. You know, as to see that this thousand year war, which is now taking place in our lives under yeah. this guise, under these geographies, mm. and still there is no peace. Yeah. Um, you know, people draw the line in 1948 or 1912 or 1888 or whatever. And wherever you draw that line, it's still subjective because this is uh, intergenerational. Mm. 2000 year conflict yeah yeah um, uh, but in right now today as we're as we're recording this people are dying yeah and that's what we should really care about
yeah, yeah. I can't support either team in this match. And if I was God, I'd be banging their heads together. Yeah, where is God, right? If 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 this, you know, if this is about ethnicity, you know, ethnics um and religious veil, if there was a loving God on either side of this discussion, yeah. you'd think they'd, they'd intervene at this point. Uh, but mm. then again, didn't sort of show up during Kosovo, didn't show up during the Holocaust, didn't yeah. show up, you know, pick your time. So why are we even doing this to each other? We're all humans. We're all, you know, we have to stop this tribalness and yeah. see us as one. The moment we can get past this and mm. see us as one human family, we will have changed the political dynamic for our species for thousands of years. Yeah, absolutely. So the, the thing I was saying about how that is spreading to our cities and this is pertinent because we've got a bit of an issue going on about how um, how Muslim values are, according to one source, British values. Mm. Now, I don't I don't think so, and I could show you all manner of examples of uh, Muslim values being very different from what the tradition of British is. And mm -hmm. later on in the show, we're going to talk about Richard Dawkins, who, of course, has come out as being on the side of Christianity rather than Islam. So that's it's all being stirred up. However, <laughs> if you think, tell me, tell me if you think this is normal for London. Is, it, is this an example of British values in our capital city? I don't know what those symbols are, but they're not British. I think that says Allah, and is it a hologram or something? Yes, it. Well, it's. It's. I'm not sure how they make it either. It's some sort of laser trans mm -hmm. projection, and mm -hmm. I think it just forms an image on the water droplets, like the the vapor in the air. Uh, it's wonderful technology, but don't use it to do that. This is not British. Well, uh, the, what you've got to remember that uh, today or maybe tomorrow is the last day of Ramadan. So we're reaching a peak uh, Muslim sort of um, anti-good and righteous kind of en energy. Mm. Hopefully after they've had a big party at the weekend, they'll calm mm -hmm. down. I hope so. <laughs> I mean, we well, usually have disorder I'm, in Manchester. I'm I'm, oh. I'm I'm sitting here with a with, with a smile because I'm I'm thinking uh, it's it's sort of reverse colonization, <laughs> colonization. Mm -hmm. so maybe yeah, maybe yeah. the UK should have uh, been keeping keeping check on uh, on immigration and and made sure that only um, non-religious or uh, that, that Muslims <laughs> don't get uh, uh, the right to stay to, to get visas and live and work. Well, <laughs> well, we're a famously we're a famously heathen nation, so I th I'm yeah. sure there are Christian and Muslim missionaries out there trying to save our souls. That view, that view, maybe of restricting immigration and preventing people who come from the hotbeds of Islam from coming here. That view is gaining momentum in the right wing. Mm. Uh, political mm. field in this country. Yeah, and it is. I, I just want to say that I am absolutely impartial on that because uh, I, I, I'm sort of, I'm sort of observing it as as a as a foreigner <laughs> to the UK, mm. and mm. and from and as somebody who's who's very used to being colonised and and who who lives in a mm. very multicultural. Um, societies i don't know david what's your feeling about that i, I i'm sort of i don't know what to make of it i'm just i'm just glad that it wasn't an image of donald trump 
Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I thought you were going to say, David, as, as, as another ex-colonial country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, um, they must have gotten permission to do this. Um, no. Oh, no. apparently they didn't. They just did it. They just did it. Yeah. Well, oh, you know, okay. um, well, I mean, it's not... It's 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 not necessarily. I mean, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, if you live in a free pluralistic society, one person's graffiti is somebody else's art. Uh, yes. and it, it does look rather um, rather artistic, actually. But next next month, it could be uh, the British National Party. Yeah. Um, you know, do using the same technology to put up something quite objectionable. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm, it, it is. It is a bit of a worry, but yeah, I'd be offended, wouldn't you? <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, if if they, if they put up La Ilaha, I'd be have no problem. Yeah, La Ilaha means right. no god. There are no gods, and it's the first two words of the Shahada. Mm. Uh, La Ilaha, I'd fine. Well, leave it there. Yeah, you know, I mean, in the U.S., they put up billboards all the time. Let's talk about God. Let's, you know, oh yeah, well, you we know, have Jesus well. is coming and all this other stuff. And yeah, we have uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I just yeah. ignore it because you know, it does, it it it, you know, it's just noise. Yeah, yeah, it's just noise. Well, in, in, one, in one instance, in the U.S. of A. in Chicago, it wasn't just noise. And this is relevant to the uh, ending of Ramadan because there was a, a boy who was in the bathroom of the mosque and he was caught eating <gasps> before they'd finished reciting the Tarawih prayer. So what did they do? They beat the shit out of him. Yeah, I mean, this, this, this is the Tarawih prayer, the prayer that they... Uh, and uh, they they say before they start breaking their fast. I'm not sure. It, I assume it is. It makes logic it's logical, isn't it? Mm. Um, but um, the, the other thing is that we know that there are there is abuse of children in uh, madrasas and mosques. Mm -hmm. That's the problem, which is is being the, the government is closing their eye to it. The, the government is closing their eyes to a lot of abuses that are going on in religion generally and mosque in particular and and it's something that is going to become an enormous scandal if they don't do something yes. about it. just as so, it has with christian churches mm. yes yes so i want to break in here because earlier on tercia mentioned christopher hitchens mm -hmm. and I, I am as you know i organize events and i've got one that is um going to be attended by David, who's just disappeared, <laughs> but he's going to come and speak to our London event on the 25th of May, along, yeah. with, along with Lawrence Krauss and Sonal Edermaruku. Oh, yes. Could, could you check the spelling in my minutes, incidentally? Okay. Yep. Yeah. And um, Chris French and Emma Park, the former editor of The Freethinker, they're all going to be there speaking and so is the sculptor who we've been liaising with regarding the uh, potential uh, break free sculpture that we're hoping to get going. Uh, so that's that's in May, very often, very close to the end of May, the 25th. But we're also organizing Hitchmas for December the 14th at Conway Hall. Did you hear that, David? Uh, yes, I was just having to deal with some um, invasive 10-year-olds for my daughter's <laughs> birthday party, so. <laughs> Never had I, hope you, I hope you're getting some cake, David. Uh, at three at, at three o'clock East Coast time, yes, so. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, the, the, the um, so you 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 were talking about um, the hitch mass. I mean, it, sorry, were, were you just making an announcement there because that yes. is going to be an interesting thing if we can get that yes. together. Yes. Yeah. Well, Lawrence Krauss is on board. So is Daniel Dennett. We don't know whether he's coming over or just going to be on screen. 
I'm pretty sure that uh, Richard Dawkins will be involved and that just leaves Sam Harris. So well, we haven't approached him yet, but um, this is going to be a festive event. Mm -hmm. Bring your children and there will be music. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at getting the London Humanist Choir involved oh, well. and, and Christmassy food. So there you go. End of announcement. Good. <laughs> so going to one of our favorite countries, Pakistan, on March the 25th, a court in Pakistan rejected a Christian woman's attempt to recover her 13-year-old daughter. And instead, the court allowed the child to go with a Muslim who had abducted her, forcibly converted her to Islam, and married her. Wow. Now, I've got a 13-year-old daughter, and I wouldn't like that to happen to her. No, I've got a 14-year-old granddaughter. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but I mean, of course, I think that is that 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 is drawn from somewhere in the Islamic scriptures. Yes, that is allowed to happen. Mm. It's extraordinary, isn't it? Child yeah. marriage. It is actually illegal in Pakistan, yeah. but this court ignored the, the 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 legality of it and just said, "Congratulations on your marriage to the girl." that i mean th this is child this is child abuse it's child it's abuse but it's also so that, that abuse of minorities it's because day and age. It, yeah it's, yeah it just boggles the mind the, 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 this is crime this the, uh, this is this is this is slavery and, yeah. and, and it is across the religion in, in... Yes, yes, indeed. What sort of I mean, it, it, this kind of thing has been going on in Islamic countries for centuries, and and it's very often the Christian girls that are yeah. abducted. Yeah, yeah. It, it can't be done the other way around. If if a if a if a Christian man abducts a, an Islamic girl, the Christian man will get executed. Yes, yes. Yeah. There you go. The yeah. wonders of religion. Yes. I, question i have a question and i really think this is something that um, maybe we can look into um john because we have an organization called the united nations and i'm sure that they have all sorts of charters about the protection of um, children they do Why mm -hmm. is there no way that that, that, that how is is a court of law um allowed to to make a decision like this that is clearly not mm -hmm. in the best interest of a, a minor, the united um, nations person how how the how, united nations and, and what what yeah. the united nations does track ahead, does track this tri type of trial slavery and they put out documents um on an annual basis about this the same yeah. problem with the united nations is the same problem that we have in most Western countries, where the idea that is the is is the idea that somehow religion is part of the answer, and not um, is is the solution to these problems, mm -hmm. and not the cause of the problems. I've worked at the UN for five years uh, for the American Humanist Association uh, on several NGO committees, and I can tell you that the UN which I'd hate to see a world without the United Nations because they do do very, very good things. Mm. Um, but the, there is a, 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 a dysfunction and a misbelief that religion can solve these problems yeah. uh, when, it, when it clearly cannot. So, the, so, so the, the United Nations will never step in and, yeah. and stop this. They'll report I mean, about it. The, and they'll say it's ethnic violence, or they'll call it, um, you, you know, uh, entrapment, but they'll never call out religion. Yeah, the, the, there's quite an interesting um, perspective on um, the issue. The issue you raise: is there an international body that could intervene and 
sort this out. Um, within the uh, European area, um, the European Commission or Convention on Human Rights does permit individual petition to the European Court of Human Rights. And that does uh, happen in, in Europe. But I mean, I think that's a pretty, un and even that system is under threat from the right wing at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is an interesting model. And if we could apply that sort of idea to these sorts of countries and, mm -hmm. and set up some international uh, machinery for review of these kind of extraordinarily um, yeah. you know, incorrect decisions. To put you, it my you have you have countries that are going back on the idea of whether or not women should lose their clitoris. Yeah. Right. I mean, so you have this violence against children. You have this violence against women, and it's yeah. often only religious violence. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and where is the world? Where are the world actors? you know, to, to stop this. Mm. Yeah. It's horrible. So we are. It, 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 um, it, it, it makes me think that what I said, sorry, in, in the very first item, I said there's still this pre prevail, prevalence of the idea that religion should be allowed to do what it does yeah. and yeah. one should trade very gently when criticizing mm. religious um, expressions yeah, yeah. of religious beliefs, and mm -hmm. that 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 seems to me to be at the at the root, one of the root causes of the problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. religions have been given exception, very far too long and for far too many things. We don't need to excuse them. There's there's no justification for bad behaviour. On the basis of him up there it's honestly right. so let's take a break from all the horrible stuff and go oh, to something a bit more um interesting or a bit more amenable should we say dawkins Absolutely. i'm not sure whether he's coming to a london event in may but he's been invited so we'll see but he's been on a TV show, it's LBC, which is a, a YouTube TV show now, London Broadcasting Company or something. And um, he's been interviewed on there. And he said, I call myself a cultural Christian. I'm not a believer. But there's a distinction between being a believing Christian and being a cultural Christian. I love hymns and Christmas carols, and I feel at home in the Christian ethos. I feel that we are a Christian country in that sense. Although statistically, the number of people who actually believe in Christianity is going down, and I'm happy with that. But I would not be happy if, for example, we lost all our cathedrals and our beautiful parish churches so I call myself a cultural Christian, and certainly if we substituted any alternative religion, that would be truly dreadful. So this is gaining uh, attention, this type of feeling, because Islam is rearing its head in such a toxic way, some people, former atheists even, are, th are thinking maybe we should run to Mother Church to protect ourselves. Hmm. What do you think of that? I mean, I, I mean, I think I think the reality is that in the West, by and large, we we live in a culture that has been created in past centuries, very much as a result of Christian influences, sure. and we do stand on the shoulders both of giants and of dwarves. And in this case, I think it's <laughs> a bit of a dwarf, to be honest. But uh, without being sex uh, ableist, disabledist, or something. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I think we have to accept that that, that is the reality. And, and it, you know, for those atheists in Saudi Arabia and Pakistan, they, they live, in, you know, as Muslim atheists. And presumably in Israel, there are, there are a load of, well, there are Jewish atheists. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and so I, I do think there is something one. in that. I mean, I actually don't fancy, I don't like most christian hymns some of the tunes all right i do i do enjoy beautiful architecture though so, uh, i I'm, i prefer classical to gothic um 
Do you? So, yeah. yeah. So, so, He's got a point, but it, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's it's treading on thin ice, isn't it? Yeah. Don't encourage them. They were bad enough in their day. Right. Yeah. I, I, Sorry, David, you go ahead. I'll go. No, ahead. no, go ahead, please. By all means, Tercy. <laughs> well, it is. Is it? Is it? Is it age before beauty? What? What? What's happening here? Is it, are you? Oh, being sad? <laughs> well, it's beauty. I think it. I think beauty always wins, and you will always win that contest. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'll take the best out of. Uh, I'll, I'll take first place amongst you gentlemen today. So, so um, <laughs> but uh, what you read there, Dave, uh, John, I can. I can resonate with it 100%. Hmm. And it seems to me, and, and we had, I belong to a Facebook group and we, there was a discussion about this exact thing. And I, and I said, well, if we can get to the point where one can be a cultural Christian, then hmm. I think there's some progress that's been made because we have had cultural Jews for centuries. Who, hmm. who, people who identify as Jewish, that, like David, um, who 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 even celebrate some of the rituals? Uh, oh, I don't do that. Maybe, maybe not celebrate, but but I mean, right. th these I can see myself. Um, uh, oh, it's today's Christmas Day, for example. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, but as as a reformed um, uh, person, we never really celebrate Christmas because it was too too Roman Catholic. But I can see that, that that's perhaps a, it's not necessarily negative to acknowledge that there is such a thing as cultural christianity and i think mm -hmm. maybe that's a, a step in the right direction in, mm -hmm. in because because it acknowledges that religion is a cultural yeah. phenomenon yeah. and yeah. we all we find our roots there somewhere yeah. and yeah. i a guy will know john you will know you've spent some time with me in the uk or i spent some time with you and you know that i go completely bonkers in even gothic churches i, yes. I love those oh and i love the mm -hmm. music or, or perpendicular thing, you remember the perpendicular one at uh, along the road here at lansing i remember all of them i i watch the photos and i, I just revel yeah. in them um continue but something that i have to smile about uh, uh, is, is that in that quote you read he said so it would be a tragedy if we lost the churches and i was thinking um, Henry the Eighth, uh, dissolution yes, of yes. monasteries. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, it's been yeah, done. Okay. Yes. yes, yes. <laughs> so I'm just some, some of them are wrecked, but they're yes, well, they're ruined. They're, but they're still there. It, it, yeah, yeah. It, it, A lot of churches of the, have been sold to the Muslims. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or the well, or the Greek, Greek Orthodox. We have a Greek Orthodox former Anglican church. In Worthing here, so I I can't wait. At the moment, I think it, Anglicanism is dying, and it's leaving behind some beautiful relics. But I I want it to go further. I want to, it to become like cultural astrology. <laughs> right. right. Finally, right. finally, guys, we've had a lot of celebrating over the Easter holiday. And some of it has been more realistic than others. So take a look at this. Tell, tell me what you think of this. Uh oh, God no. Boxing Jesus. <laughs> Push back. Push MMA back. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Where is that? Mexico or Spain or? Um, I think it's Indonesia or the Philippines somewhere. Yeah, uh, it's very popular in the Philippines to yeah. have that. Uh, that was hilarious. Uh, but can I tell you something interesting? Um, we've, I so so I make these memes in my, when I'm bored, and. Um, so on the on the one app that I have, it has an AI creator, and I wanted to make um, Easter memes where it, where I wanted exactly that. I wanted a Jesus who fights back, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I, so you can type in the search phrase, and actually, so I typed in something like uh, "mean Jesus," uh, meaning like a, and and the message came back and it said. Um, 
the image you requested cannot be created. Um, so, oh. And I found that quite, and, and, and then I tried some other combinations as well. And yeah. it seems that even artificial intelligence is being sensitive to Christian, yeah. Christian Don't Christian go Christians. there. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I would be offended if I was you. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't well, think I you'd was, have a problem with a mean Muhammad, however. I think they'd have a Oh, you might. <laughs> It's yeah. very dangerous making cartoons of Mohammed. Anyway, guys, mm -hmm. you've been wonderful. Thank you very much. Take the rest of the day off. <laughs> Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Russell was the Pope appealing for peace or were he praying for peace? And the same applies to the Caribbean dragon. Yeah, that's a good question. So what do you what do you have to say about that?